Customers already love vRealize Automation as the provisioning and orchestration plane for VMware environments. It delivers infrastructure automation from its self-service catalog, policy and governance, release pipeline automation, and enhanced visibility and analytics. It'd be hard to top that, right? The latest release of vRealize Automation does it all and more. Everything you love about VRA, plus new features such as simplified cloud setup for VMware Cloud Foundation, enhanced network automation, Terraform and Ansible integration, and Kubernetes automation. vRealize Automation helps customers accelerate their journey to a self-service hybrid cloud and multi-cloud environment, enabling rapid cloud setup for VMware Cloud Foundation. We're also making it easier for VMware Cloud on AWS users to access vRealize Automation and vRealize Orchestrator. vRealize Automation is a powerful infrastructure as code and CI CD platform for DevOps admins and SREs. We're also helping Kubernetes admins to manage their Kubernetes cluster infrastructure with integrated support for vSphere with Kubernetes. vRealize Automation delivers enhanced capabilities for network automation with support for the latest release of NSX, rich capabilities for on-demand security groups, and integration with third-party IP address management tools. The best just keeps getting better. vRealize Automation delivers a modern infrastructure automation platform for self-service hybrid clouds and multi-cloud environments using DevOps principles. Hello, and welcome to this session using Stack Enterprise and vRealize Automation together. My name is Vincent Riccio, and I'm a technical marketing manager at VMware responsible for automation. So today what I'm going to show you is how these two solutions can work together today. We're basically going to deploy an application and then um, see that application get hacked. So it should be pretty fun. But first I'm going to go through just a little bit of an introduction of some of the services within vRealize Automation. And then I'll explain what we're going to do in the demo. And then we'll dive into the technology a little bit and you actually see this in action. So let's look at what components make up vRealize Automation. There are a few services within vRealize Automation that you can use to do a number of things within the product. The first one is Cloud Assembly. This is essentially where we build our cloud, we set up our cloud, and we also create our cloud templates that are our de declarative infrastructure as code written in YAML to build out our deployments and applications and services. Essentially, what we do in Cloud Assembly as well is carve out infrastructure within your multiple cloud environments, whether that's a private, hybrid, or multi-cloud scenario. Some examples of that could be, um, you know, carving out AWS regions or clusters with inside of vSphere. And that gives us the ability to, you know, identify what areas we may want to, to have certain deployments go to in a cloud agnostic approach. Uh, so we abstract some uh, information and components of these multiple clouds and allow the administrators to just maybe tag something uh, you know, with a, with a certain tag like PCI or, uh, you know, gold or uh, production. And so we take a really unique <clears throat> and powerful cloud agnostic approach uh, to how we do our deployments. And a lot of that is built out in cloud assembly. The, the next section uh, or service that I want to talk about inside of Realize Automation is Service Broker. So Service Broker essentially uh, is, is our multi-cloud catalog. This is where we, ha we have basically tiles where people log in, can log into the system, use role-based access kind of policies, and they'll see things that they're entitled to, and then they can request applications and services and, and do a number of things. So we can basically curate content in here uh, from multiple sources, like CloudFormation templates, Vrealize Orchestrator workflows for like what we call XS or anything as a service type requests, um, and then also uh, our Cloud Assembly uh, Cloud templates, and also our CoString pipelines, which I'll talk about CoStream in a second. But those can also be put in there. So you can really have a rich catalog of services that uh, you can present to your organization uh, across teams. Uh, so that way, you know, you might have certain groups that want to be able to do things like onboard individuals. Um, so we call that kind of like HR as a service or XS, which has been uh, very powerful for our customers. 
The next service I want to go over is CodeStream. This is our continuous delivery pipeline service, where essentially we can run pipelines within CodeStream that chunk things down into tasks. So whether or not you want to deploy a machine, then maybe SSH into the machine, or you want to deploy something onto Kubernetes, uh, spin up another environment. This is a way for us to create these tasks and pipelines and integrating with other things in the, in the environment like Docker or Kubernetes um, or Jenkins. And so we kind of call this the glue uh, for your DevOps uh, strategy. And so CodeStream can be very powerful because there's a lot of different things you can do. You can run scripts, you can actually create scripts, put them right into CodeStream, call them whenever you need to. There's variables that you can call uh, in your pipelines. And we're going to be uh, using CodeStream today to initiate the hack against a website that we deploy. Uh, so it'll be kind of fun to see that. Essentially, CodeStream will SSH into it and replace an index.php file uh, to show a little hackery that we're going to do um, against the website that got deployed. Another service uh, that comes with VROS Automation is our orchestrator service. Uh, orchestrator has been around a long time, but we've recently made some really cool enhancements to it around... Uh, being able to support multiple languages like Python, Node.js, so it's basically polyglot um, in terms of the languages it can support, um, as well as doing some source control with Git. But this is really our orchestration engine. You can run scripts in here, do the, run those scripts based upon subscriptions. So during compute provision or post provision, uh, we can run these scripts and help us really orchestrate our, our, our automation. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, salt stack and fig. So this will be the service that will be incorporated into the realized automation. So uh, we're looking at the, the name of being salt stack config. This will be the configuration management section inside of realized automation, right? So uh, this will fill that gap uh, for configuration management uh, within realized automation from just a full uh, configuration management standpoint. Uh, so we'll be able to manage configuration state and then initially do software deployment. So those are really going to be areas where you'll see um, salt stack config start to really help you with virtualized automation in the beginning will be with software deployment and then general infrastructure uh, configuration state management as well okay so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do in the demo so in the demo i'm going to demonstrate using cloud assembly cloud templates to to show you how we are declaring what the server is going to look like and the minion script to install the minion down on the machine we're going to use virtualized automation service broker to deploy the minion server Salt Enterprise will automatically register the minion and accept the key. Salt Enterprise will automatically install an OpenCart application website. Virilize Animation CodeStream will simulate a hack to the OpenCart website. And then Salt Enterprise will use Reactor's beacons to automatically restore the website. Okay, so let's get going. So I'm going to jump into uh, Cloud Assembly. And I'm going to just show you the cloud template that we're going to use uh, ultimately to get the, at least the machine deployed in the salt minion uh, installed uh, on on the server so I'm just going to run into my uh, my cloud template here and uh, uh, what we're going to do when we when we install the minion we're going to use basically cloud, cloud config uh, but this is uh, basically our cloud template so you notice on the right hand side we have our YAML code that essentially is our infrastructure's code type platform for us to declare what we're doing here. So we're going to deploy an Ubuntu 18 image. So you can see under that properties, uh, Ubuntu 18. And then uh, we're running a cloud config script to essentially uh, install uh, uh, the minion agent through the bootstrap. So we're going to bootstrap the minion agent on it and have it automatically register with the master. Now what we do with our templates is we can release them to our service broker catalog. So if you notice on the left-hand side, number four says unrelease, the other ones say release. Once you hit release, it releases to the service broker catalog. So let's go over to the service broker catalog and we should see our deploy uh, open cart tile on the left-hand side. So this is the service broker catalog that I talked about earlier. This is where we can curate content. People can come in, deploy uh, services, request items, request uh, different forms that they could fill out for different things in the environment. Um, like, like I mentioned, onboarding users or just running scripts or doing anything like API calls, things like that. But in this particular case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ultimately deploy that server 
uh, and then have it register with um, uh, the, the, the SaltStack uh, Enterprise uh, server. So I'm just gonna give the deployment itself a name and then I'm gonna enter a machine name here. Now this is important for the demo because the machine name OC Cool application is what the machine will be called the DNS name and the host name will, will take this name. Now by default, SaltStack Enterprise will make the, its minion ID inside of SaltStack um, the, the FQDN of the machine. So we're gonna trigger a lot of stuff based on OC-Cool. So we're gonna look for a minion ID called OC-Cool-something or whatever. And just based upon that OC cool section, we're going to do it. So here we see the machine got deployed. Um, it took a 10.176.152.111 address. Uh, so Viraz Automation went ahead and deployed the machine. Uh, so now uh, SaltStack should, uh, Salt, Salt Enterprise will go ahead and, and, and register this minion. And then we could start performing tasks on the minion. Now the, the key and the connection between the minion and, and the Salt Master will be automatically done. So um, you, can, you can see now that the OC Cool application uh, is, is, is registered and accepted and present. And we can see that 10.176.152.111 address come over. Okay, now um, what it's doing now is it's going to start installing the OpenCart website application for us. So essentially what it's doing right here is it's running that state.lsls based upon that orchestration before it. And that is essentially now installing the application automatically. Um, let me show you a little bit how we're doing this behind the scenes because this is going to take just kind of a couple of minutes uh, to install. So I'll kind of give you a little brief tour of, of what we're doing and how we kind of made some of this orchestration happen within Salt Enterprise. If you go to the file server section, we have this hierarchy of folders and files. Under reactor, we have a reactor.conf. The reactor.conf gets pushed down to the Salt Master. And essentially we could see Salt Auth, which is saying, okay, what do you want to do when, when a minion tries to authenticate? We want to run accept key.sls. What happens when a minion starts? We want to run opencart.sls. And in the SLS files, we're going to filter uh, based upon that OC cool name. So, and here we're saying, uh, there's like a little Jinja filter saying that when, some, when a, a key is pending and the minion ID starts with OC-cool, go ahead and run this wheel.key.accept, which is a built-in function to accept a key. Then also kick off this opencart.sls, which has an argument to point to the mods opencart. That's the folder within that base structure you can see called OpenCart, which I'll open up here. That's essentially going to ultimately run this OC install.sls. It's going to hit that init SLS first, but then init SLS tells it to run the OC install.sls. This is installing all of our packages that we need in order to install the OpenCart application, the MySQL server, the client, Apache 2, PHP, uh, and then also python.pynotify also gets installed here. And this is important because this is our prerequisite for the beacon file that we're going to install later here that got just, just got highlighted um, that uh, essentially is going to uh, get laid down on the minion. So the beacon file will uh, detect the change that we're going to tell it to detect. Okay, so the beacon file has already been created uh, within Salt, and then we're going to push that down to the minion. And uh, basically, that beacon is going to look for changes uh, in our index.php file. So when we do our hack, the beacon will say, oh, there's been a change. And uh, so let me show you that beacon.conf file real quick. So the beacon.conf file is saying, if the file index.php in the directory var www.opencart gets, modif gets modified, then go ahead and let's do something. And what we're going to do essentially is what the reactor.conf is going to tell us tell it to do. So whenever we see the I notify kick off and that www open card index PHP gets hacked, we're going to run the fix index.php.sls. That particular SLS is saying go to the fix hack directory and I'll tell you what to do next. So essentially what we need to do now is um, uh, uh, do whatever's in that fix hack file on folder and then we'll go ahead and restore it back to its original state. If we look at the init.sls inside the fix hack folder, we can see that uh, in that middle section file managed, um, we are basically going to uh, replace that open cart index.php on the minion with the source, which is that index.php inside the fix hack folder. Now notice we also have a little sleep timer up at the top. We're, we're, we're doing a sleep of about 20 seconds because what'll happen is when we initiate the hack, the, the uh, correction would happen so fast that you wouldn't really see it. 
so we just put a little bit of a timer in there so you can see that the hack actually happened for a little bit see our fun little hacking graphics there on their website and then eventually we'll see the site come back um, after that 20 second or so period of time so we just did that uh, for demo purposes uh, because it just would just happen so fast that uh, we needed to make sure that you could see it Okay, so let's go back now uh, to the minion and let's check and see if the uh, open card application uh, was successfully deployed. And so I'll just highlight the IP address down here. We'll go to that IP in a browser and see if our Moad shopping cart uh, application actually got deployed here. Uh, and it looks like it did. So our Superstore application website is up and running and this is what we want, right? So um, essentially now the next step is to go ahead and hack it. Uh, and then change it, uh, that index.php file, which will then ultimately trigger the reactor beacon system to go in and change it back to this particular website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to CodeStream and initiate that hack. Uh, so I'm gonna act like a hacker, basically go into CodeStream. CodeStream's gonna SSH into the minion, and it's essentially going to run a, a, a script and replace that index.php with, with some hackery code. Uh, so let's go into the execution section of CodeStream. I'll click on the, uh, the one that's waiting for me. So this knows that the minion's there and the website's installed. And so now it's just waiting for me to click the, uh, I'll click the wait for the salt portion of the demo uh, link. And then once I click that green approve, it's gonna run the script to replace that index.php as so you see the arrow clicking toward the approve. So once I hit that, a script goes runs uh, to connect to that minion. And uh, here in just a second, we should see, in fact, I'll just refresh here. Yeah, there we go. So we did get hacked, <clears throat> right? So the Halloween hackers um, are, are in business today and they're out causing trouble, right? And uh, so what we want to do is now that they've, they've hacked our site, we're not too worried about it because we have a reactor beacon within Salt Enterprise that's going to uh, essentially get us back to where we should be. Uh, without us even having to touch the system. So this is really kind of the power of that reactor beacon system uh, within Salt Enterprise to be able to get you back to where you need to be. And so you, you can see the applications of this, not just with files, but with other you know configurations within an operating system um, or something like that. So, all right, so our sleep timer should be just about up here. So let's refresh and see if we're back to business. And we are. So we're back in business now. Our, our uh, electronic superstore application website is back up and our customers can continue to buy our products. So this was just a, hopefully a fun, quick demonstration to give you an idea of, of how we can use these two products together. Obviously, as we go forward, uh, we'll see deeper integration and more integration between these products. Um, and also that salt config um, uh, service that I talked about earlier as well. Um, so real quick before I end it though, I want to just kind of show you a little bit of what happened when the hack uh, fix hack occurred. So within uh, salt stack enterprise, we can go to um, yeah, activity and then in progress, or I'm sorry, uh, that first one right there, uh, the state dot apply, I'll click on that job ID. And basically with that, uh, what this is going to show you is that the fix hack got kicked off. So um, if we scroll down, I'll scroll down a little bit and you can see just sort of the, uh, the, the timer, the 20 second timer and then the fix hack. Yeah, um, I'll highlight that for you there. So essentially just want to show you that so you can kind of see just sort of what happened that the job did run uh, within Salt Stack. Okay, well, great. Have a great SaltConf 2020. Thanks for uh, watching this demo and um, have a wonderful day.